Let's bring in Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management. He's also a psychedelic rocker, he tells me. He toured Eastern Europe one time. He's a pretty nifty guitar player. But we're not going to get into that now. Ryan, uh, we thought that the selling was over. We had a big session yesterday. That's right. And now here we are again, looking a little iffy on the market. Investors... I thought we're going to be happy about the careers singing Kumbaya. Right. But there's some pushback on President Trump's uh, tariff um, proposals from people of his own party. And that seemed to give the markets a nice push, but maybe not. Sure. Um, you know, day to day, unfortunately, the market is not going to go linear in a straight line for us. Why not? Why not? I'm well, just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> let me talk to the, the market guys and I'll find out. <laughs> All <for> right. <laughs> All right. So where do we go from here? It seems very headline driven right now, which can be a little tough for the average investor. When you have one decent headline, market goes up. Next mm -hmm. day, someone says something that's considered off and then the market drops 200 points. How do you play that? Well, I think you have to look at the underlying drivers of the market. And I, you know, I say it's almost like this magical formula right now. They call it the Goldilocks economy where you have low inflation. I mean, inflation hasn't come up much even with, um, you know, we had good employment numbers come out a couple weeks ago, which is very positive. Right. Uh, in addition to that, you have synchronized global growth around the world. Not only are companies in the U.S. growing out their earnings, but you're seeing that on a global basis too. And that doesn't happen all the time because if you look at the last nine years, it was really a U.S. driven market. Yeah. Well, all those dynamics right. are changing. We so, were the only game in town. Yeah. And that's that's not the way it is now. So. So rising interest rates should be considered a good thing because it shows the health of the economy and where we're going. It's tougher because it costs more money to borrow money to expand. So there is negatives to that as well. And it also gives competition to equities. Right. Because then all of a sudden the bond market looks more attractive with the yield. You think of that, you know, that, that sounds about right, but in practicality, I mean, the 10 year Treasury is not even at 3% yet. True. It's not so great. So it's just not that attractive. You know, even if rates do move up a little bit here, I just don't see that being a big driver to put money into the bond market all of a sudden. All right, next one for you. We get the February jobs report Friday. Does a good report give us the next second leg up? We're, well, we're, we're getting close to 25,000. We're down 81 now, but do you see another leg up? Um, I think it's going to be par for the course. I think we're expecting a good jobs number on Friday. I think that's what you'll get. Um, so that's probably already baked into the market. That's not going to be something that's going to you know, blow anyone's socks off. Even if it comes in a little bit less than what's expected, I still think that's not really going to affect the market. Any particular sectors you like right now, Ryan? Um, I mean, I love, I love housing market. I think it's a great place to put some money. Um, sold right. off a little bit this year, but let's face it. Millennials are finally moving out of their parents' house. They're starting to finally form families. <laughs> that's going to drive the housing market for the next couple of years.